Good morning to everyone at the mission and anyone who is taking in this video no matter how you have come across it. Our video this morning will feature more familiar faces and familiar voices from our own congregation as we haven't been able to see each other or be together physically now for more than a month. We really wanted to bring in, you know, those people that we miss and we want to hear from. This morning we'll feature uh, a larger segment for Mission Kids, and we're going to hear from some of our teachers, an object lesson, and from Kathy. Our lesson or our sermon will feature a few more families and familiar faces, uh, and just what's going on with them during this time. So just pray that being able to reconnect with some of our congregation will just be a blessing to you and your family at this time. Good morning and thank you for tuning into the mission. We have been so encouraged to see people tuning in and watching the videos we've been posting. Um, we miss you all so very much and hope you enjoy this segment of the family features. Thank you to all who participated. I know I have enjoyed it immensely and I hope you do as well. Well, the Hildebrands have been enjoying this time together for the most part. Um, as weather allows, we have been trying to get outside as much as we can and just enjoying the woods and God's creation. Uh, we've seen lots of different birds fly in and um, enjoy the bird feeders. We even have rescued a cat that showed up at our house and um, you can tell God has been working on my heart because I never thought that I would have a cat, but here we are. <laughs> um, hope you have been enjoying your time at home as well. We so look forward to when we can get back together. In the meantime, there are many free resources that are available. Um, you can go to Focus on the Family website. They have so many different activities that you can do together as a family or individually, studies, resources, and guides. Um, both Kathy and Ryan have uh, suggested the Bible Project, which has been an amazing resource for us as a family. We have loved watching their videos and just the explanations and the drawings that they have done to explain certain things in the Bible has been wonderful for us as a family, and we hope you have enjoyed it as well. A couple announcements for today, uh, just to say thank you again for all those who have been donating to the food pantry. Just a friendly reminder, if you still want to make donations, please reach out to me. You can uh, call me, leave a message at the church, or you can email the mission at rogers.com and we can schedule a time to uh, get those donations dropped off at the church. Uh, friendly reminder again, if you want to tithe as well, only if you're able to, you can mail those to the church or to Jeff Thomas, or you can arrange for a drop off at the church through me as well. And I'll make sure those funds get uh, directed to Jeff. I also just want to say, I know Ryan has mentioned before about HSCP, our Houghton Summer Celebration Camp. We are praying um, that with God's timing and with his blessing that we are able to still operate that this summer. What we hope to do is have uh, by Monday, um, have the applications available. If people want to submit an application for that position, they can check out our website or Facebook page as well. I'll also be emailing that. Um, out to everyone and um, we just want to have things in place and ready to go so that if we're able to have it during the summer we've got our team ready and I really hope and look forward to being able to do that as well and um, I just want to say that I so look forward to seeing you all I hope you enjoy each of these segments um, from here on out, we hope to have a sermon every Sunday, so please feel free to tune in. If you forget where to find us, you can always go to the Mission website, and down at the bottom it has a YouTube link so that you can find our The Mission YouTube channel for every Sunday. Feel free to share that with your friends and family as we all need hope and encouragement during this time. Thanks so much and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Good morning, Mission family. We are so honored to be worshiping with you this morning. We trust that you're all doing well and staying healthy.
Go high and glorify your name.
kids just want to say hello hope you are all well and safe and healthy and I know right now we can't get together at the church building with our teachers and friends and classmates and volunteers I just want to offer uh, a lesson that you can either have sent through mail or through email as a video if it's something that you like let your parents know and I'll send that for you I wanted to read something that I found this week it said I am the church you are the church we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, we are the church. And also I had a scripture verse that I want to share for all of you. And it is 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. I hope this is the message that you can carry throughout the week and let all your worries go and have a great day. Pelin Studio presents Fear Not, the story of Daniel and the Lion's Den. Darius the king reorganized his kingdom. Daniel was so much smarter than the other leaders that the king decided to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. The other leaders got together to find something in Daniel's life that they could use against him. But they couldn't dig up anything. He was totally trustworthy. So they cooked up a plan and then went to the king and said, King Darius, live forever. We've agreed that the king should issue the following decree. For the next 30 days, no one is to pray to any god or man except you, O king. Anyone who disobeys will be thrown into the lion's den. King Darius signed the decree. When Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just as he had always done. His house had windows in the upstairs that opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. The leaders came and found him praying, asking God for help. They went straight to the king and said, Daniel ignores your decree. Three times a day he prays. At this, the king was very upset and tried his best to get Daniel out of the fix he'd put him in. But then the leaders were back. Remember, O king, that the king's decree can never be changed. The king ordered Daniel brought and thrown into the lion's den. But he said to Daniel, Your God, to whom you are so loyal, is going to get you out of this. A stone slab was placed over the opening of the den. The king then went back to his palace. He refused dinner. He couldn't sleep. He spent the night fasting. At daybreak, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. As he approached the den, he called out anxiously, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve so loyally, saved you from the lions? O king, live forever, said Daniel. My God sent his angel who closed the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent before God and also before you, O king. I've done nothing to harm you. 
When the king heard these words, he was happy. He ordered Daniel taken up out of the den. When he was hauled up, there wasn't a scratch on him. He had trusted his God. We just want to give a quick shout out and say hi to the mission kids. Uh, we miss you all so much. We thought we'd bring our kids along this morning to help us out with some of the songs. They are going to do some actions and we want you guys to do them right along with us at home. Mission Kids families, it's Miss Charlotte here. This message is for our two and three year olds. Just letting you know uh, that I miss you and I can't wait to see you again. Jesus loves you and so do I. Well, good morning to you and a big shout out to all the girls and boys who are watching this. If you can't see very well from where you're sitting, I suggest that you get closer to the screen because this part of the church service is especially for you. Well, life sure has changed, hasn't it? Who would have ever thought that we'd all be gathered around a screen for our church service on a Sunday morning? I bet that in your wildest dreams that when you left for March break, you never thought that you would be home all of this time. And who knows how much longer you'll be home. You might not even get back there the rest of this school year. Did I just hear a collective groan from your parents? Oh, teachers. Your parents are teaching you now, aren't they? Well, how is that going for you? Maybe I should have Pastor Ryan run my name and my phone number across the bottom of this screen so that you can call me if you want to talk about it further. Maybe even your parents will want to talk about it further. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't really like this new way of doing things. I'm stuck in my house. I can't go shopping. 
I can't go out for dinner. I can't have my friends over. I can't go shopping. I can't go golfing. I can't get my hair cut. Did I mention that I can't go shopping? Well, we all know the buzzwords, don't we? Social distancing, isolation, quarantine, speaking moistly. Just be thankful that there's a screen between us right now. But I want to talk to you about another very important word that affects both young and old. And that word is fear. Have you washed your hands with soap? Have you used your hand cleanser? What about your mask? Where's your mask? Fear. Will I get sick? Will someone I know get sick? Fear. Will I get behind in school? Will my parents lose their jobs? Fear. And these are just a few of the questions and images running through our heads that contribute to the fear factor. If we let ourselves, it is so easy to get caught up in all the uncertainty and fear. But how do we stop it? Well, today, I gathered a few things from my kitchen to help reassure you that we don't have to live in fear over the coronavirus or anything else for that matter. The first thing is this glass vase. Well, this glass vase represents your body. This is you and this is me, perfectly made by a God who loves us. Well, next we have baking soda. And this baking soda, it represents fear. And you know that fear just naturally occurs all around us. It exists in the world and we can't escape fear. It just comes into our body and it hangs around unless we have something to help us push past it and get it out. I think that's just about enough fear in there. And now I said that we need something to help us push past this fear. And that's where this next thing comes in. And this is called vinegar. And the vinegar is Jesus. You know, when we fill ourselves right up with Jesus, the fear that lives inside of us just pushes right out. Jesus helps us overcome the fear and push it right out of our lives. You notice there's still a little bit of fear in here. So that's because we're, we're just human and there's always going to be something that we're afraid of. So it's only with Jesus' help that we're able to push past that fear. Jesus wants to help us. So we need to invite him in and ask him to fill us up to overflowing so that we can push that fear right out of our lives. You know, I want to encourage you this morning to put your trust in Jesus. Fill yourself up with him and let all of your fear spill out. Jesus is bigger than the fear. You know, the Bible tells us in Psalm 56, verse 3, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. What are you putting your trust in this morning? Let's get rid of fear. Let's invite Jesus in and let's say goodbye fear. 
You know, after watching those clips, I am sure that all of us lament more so the fact that we can't get together physically because one of our favorite things about our gatherings is uh, seeing our children make friends and experience community and learn together. And uh, we know that they too are, you know, a bit confused and uh, they're definitely sad that they can't see their friends. So we want to thank everyone for contributing to those, to that Mission Kids content. Thank you so much. We do just want to lift up this morning in prayer our young families, you know, our young families, husbands and wives who have taken on a lot more responsibility, you know, being at home, possibly having to work from home and be a teacher or just try and keep some sense of routine and structure in the, in the home. Our hearts go out to you. We want to think of all those families who are facing unemployment. We want to think of all those families who are, you know, there's just been a really big disruption uh, to their daily lives right now. We think of uh, all people who are affected by COVID-19, uh, particularly a lady by the name of Isla Mae Snow. We may, she may not be familiar to all of us, but she is <clears throat> a dear friend to Kathleen Dearden. And Isla Mae Snow uh, not only contracted uh, COVID-19, but succumbed to it as well. She leaves behind uh, husband Don. So we just want to lift up the whole Snow family and all those who are affected by that. I want to think of uh, Kelly Bugner's uh, father, who's out from hospital but is in a very weakened state, and the family is giving a lot of care and support to them. We just want to lift up that family during this difficult time as well. I think particularly our hearts this morning go out to our fellow Canadians in Nova Scotia. The tragedy that has befallen them is incomprehensible. One man's actions have just devastated a community, have ruined families, and have just changed life forever for those communities. We just want to pray for them and lift them up. I've been hearing that the song Amazing Grace has really brought a lot of comfort uh, during this time of grief. And we just pray that they would be able to find an amazing God and an amazing shepherd during this difficult time. We just want to lift up all these prayer requests now before our Lord and uh, just submit them to him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you that you have not abandoned us. We thank you, Father, and we recognize this morning that we need a shepherd. We need a shepherd to walk beside us, to help us with our daily tasks, to help us with our daily decision-making and our daily routines. Father, we think of all those parents who have taken on a lot of extra responsibilities, who are trying to keep a sense of structure in the home, continue their employment, and help their children engage with their learning. We think of families who have lost employment and are trying to be strategic and wise with the money that uh, they do have and also wait for assistance that's to come. We pray, Father, that you would guide and help our, the husbands and wives. You keep them unified, keep them focused, and keep their heart together. We pray, Father, for our children who are missing their friends. pray you encourage them to know that this time will pass and they'll see their friends. And we pray that the families would benefit from times spent together. Father, we think of all those who are affected by COVID-19. We think of Isla May Snow, who is now in your hands. We pray, Father, for husband Don and the whole Snow family who misses her presence. We pray that you would bring comfort and solace to them at this time. We think of Kelly Bugner's uh, father. Father, we pray that you'd help the family to understand how they can help, how they can continue to come alongside Dad and give him the support uh, that he needs at this time. Father, we think of our fellow Canadians out in Nova Scotia. We pray for the grief and the heartache that they are all experiencing right now. Father, we just pray that as they look to the song Amazing Grace, that they would find an amazing shepherd, an amazing God, and an amazing comfort during this time. Father, we pray for just an army of angels to protect that, uh, that community against despair, against hopelessness, against everything that evil has already uh, sown in that community. We pray, Father, that as a community they would rally together. We pray for the clergy and pastors that are out there right now who are desperately trying to help and bring comfort 
uh, in a situation where they can't gather. We pray that uh, your kingdom would break through in a mighty way to help those people and to help them find an amazing God amongst a terrible tragedy. Help us to be content with our situation, knowing we don't have to walk through that. Father, we thank you that you're present with us. Your spirit walks beside us, equipping us for what we need for the present day. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Thomas family, I'd like to extend our well wishes to you, and we hope that you're all safe and doing well during this lockdown period. Uh, we certainly would like to note that we also miss you during this time. Uh, during the past couple of weeks, a few of you have asked me how the church is doing financially and how you can continue to tithe during this period. Uh, firstly, I'd like to note that uh, we are in a good position to weather this storm. God has truly blessed our church with a very generous congregation over the last number of years. So from a financial perspective, we're in very good shape. Uh, in regards to tithing, uh, if you wish to uh, submit tithes and offerings, uh, please do so by either mailing or dropping off your offering directly to the church, or you can mail it directly to me, Jeff Thomas, at 1136 Norfolk County Road 45, RR2 Langton, Ontario, N0E1G0, and I'll certainly take care of that for you. Uh, lastly, I'd just like to say um, from Gloria, the boys, and myself, we wish you all the best. Uh, we encourage everyone to enjoy this extended time with their families, and we look forward to seeing you all really soon. Um, one last parting note, I'd just like to say, uh, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. Uh, according to my son earlier today, he said, Dad, looks like you ate about five cameras. Take care. Hey Mission, it's uh, Tony here. Good to talk to you. It's been a while. We miss you guys. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys a little uh, update on what we're doing here in the Suderman house to uh, uh, be responsible and social distance. I don't know if anybody's been to my house. It's quite small. Uh, so we've resorted to coming outside to social distance. Uh, it's quite easy out here. We've got a lot of space. So uh, let's have a look and see what Emma's up to. Oh, there she is. She's doing homework. Or something like that. Maybe she's probably just watching uh, YouTube. You know how kids are. I can still hear you. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So let's go over here and see what Ava's up to. Oh, there she is. I haven't, uh, I haven't sent hello to a razor in probably, what, four weeks now, I think it's been? What do you think? I like it. Oh, hey, Ava. She's up there reading books. She loves reading. Oh. Oh, that's okay. I got, I got, I got another one. That was my last one. Okay, that's great. Whatever, we'll get her some more. No worries. Yeah, and I'm, I think Kathy's out there uh, getting the mail. That's what it looks like she's doing. She loves getting the mail. There she is. Hey, Kathy. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We're, uh, we're staying safe, staying a uh, safe distance apart from each other. And uh, we're just looking forward to when we can uh, get together and see each other again. Uh, it'll come to pass soon. We'll be able to visit again and uh, fellowship once again, and uh, it'll be a good time. So until then, just ask that you stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, God bless you. And we'll see you soon, Mission. Take care. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well and that you are happy, keeping healthy, and keeping busy. Some of you may know that I live with two other girls. So far, we have been keeping well. We have been blessed that we have stayed healthy and that we are comfortable in our food situation. So far, we've kept the peace between the three of us. I've been trying to keep busy. I go for scooter rides, safely of course, and I've also started painting. Here are some of my pieces. If anyone would like a free painting, please feel free to text, Facebook, or email me. I think God has allowed me to use this gift in order to bless others and show love. What have I learned during this troubled time? I've been learning to stay calmer and stay more positive despite having depression and anxiety. I've been learning how to strengthen my painting skills and I've learned 
to use new technology. I would like to say thank you to all the essential workers out there. Thank you for your time, health, and efforts for help flattening the curve. I hope you all continue to stay positive, safe, happy, and healthy. Okay, there we are. Hi, Mission Hello. Family. This is Dave and Gwen. This is our little contribution to the uh, video portion. We miss you guys so much, and we love watching the services to see familiar faces. We're so thankful for you guys and yep. everybody who's putting the services together. So um, this is our two cents on isolation and, and what's going on. You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Dave's two cents. My two cents. Yes. Isolation is a good thing right now. I'm not too isolated with Gwen working in the healthcare industry, but um, but we're safe and we we're all haven't learned anything yet. <laughs> so we'll see. There's honesty for you. <laughs> um, in my opinion, I my life hasn't changed a whole lot because I am still working. Um, for those who don't know, I'm a PSW at the hospital in Simcoe. And so I still have my normal schedule. I go to work uh, like usual. The only difference, I guess, is when I come home, I stay home. I haven't been able to see my parents, which I'm sure a lot of you have experienced, and um, our two boys and their wives who are both expecting. So that's been a fun part of um, this experience, but it's also a little bit bittersweet because we can't be with them and experiencing it with them. But we're thankful for technology and video chatting and texting and messaging and keeping in contact that way. Um, I guess what I've learned would be I will never ever take my family for granted again and little things like just dropping in at my mom and dad's and giving them a hug and a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me emotional because I miss them. Yeah. But um, And just going to church and seeing you guys and getting hugs and listening to Ryan speak and singing together and worshiping together and I cannot wait to do that again so I was not expecting to cry but anyway <laughs> um, we love you guys and we love miss you. everybody so much and can't wait to all be together again thank you thank you so much to those contributors and Tony you are looking great with that beard man keep it up I think this thing's gonna get huge by the time uh, this thing is all said and done Thank you again to our contributors. And seeing those faces and hearing your voices uh, does just make me miss gathering together all the more. This morning, I just wanted to take a little bit of time just to bring a short devotional. You know, as I was thinking about, and actually as I was watching all these videos and putting, and putting them together, you know, it made me realize, realize how much I really do miss uh, getting together and being together as a church family physically. And, you know, it's really made me miss all the more um, our distance apart. And I was thinking, what can I maybe say to reflect on that a little bit? And actually, I was drawn back to a passage that I have spoken on before. It was the very, it was the passage I spoke on uh, the very last Sunday of 2019 in Zechariah. And there's a great part of Zechariah's big vision for what's to come. This is a vision that is more than just speaking to our present time, but it's a vision that speaks to uh, a future time, the time of the church actually. And the language he uses is very fitting for today. And it also gives us some great guidance. Zechariah of chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 is where I'm going to be reading from. So Zechariah has this vision. Like I said, it's a big vision. It's not. It's a vision of a time to come, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years from when he is speaking. God has placed it on his heart to see something that's going to last for thousands of years. And of course, he's referring to the church. In verse 9, he starts by saying this, Though I scatter them among the peoples, yet in the distant lands they will remember me. They and their children will survive, and they will return. Verse 10, I will bring them back from Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them to Gilead and Lebanon, and there will not be room enough for them. 
You know, I can't think of how fitting that language is in verse 9. Though I scatter them among the peoples. Right now we very much feel scattered. Now, specifically, Zechariah is referring to a people that will be scattered throughout the whole globe. This is a global vision. You know, he is coming from a context where the people of Israel were their own ethnic people and they had their own land. They were gathered together. And for us, that is a sort of a, a sort of a symbol of what's to come in the life that is to come later in the afterlife. You know, together we'll be as one people in one place. But he's saying, and he has a vision, or God has placed a vision on his heart, that there will be this time where there's this global people that are sort of multi-ethnic and they're all over the globe. And that's what he's referring to when he's saying that, though I scatter them. So he's not referring to this specific time and place. But we feel very scattered, don't we? We feel very scattered. I'm going to look in verse 9 when the next verse, sorry, the next sentence, Zechariah says, they will return. And I got to think that is something that we're all looking forward to as well. We're all looking forward to a time when we will return. But as I look to verse 10, we can see how this scattering has a purpose. First of all, verse 10 starts off with a hopeful promise that God will bring them back. And he says, he uses the poetic language of bringing them back from Egypt and Assyria. He brings them to Gilead and Lebanon. Uh, you know, these were references to something going on at the time. This is references that the people at the first audience would have understood and had meaning for them. But there is this really hopeful promise at the beginning of verse 10 that he will bring them back. But we see the purpose of of this scattering at the end of verse 10. The end of verse 10 says, and there will not be room enough for them. That when we are gathered back together, there won't be enough room because there will be more people returning than people being scattered. That our scattering is about being on mission. There's a context for our being scattered. We're, we're being scattered out to uh, perform and do and, and accomplish the mission of the kingdom, that we're being scattered for a reason, and that is to further the kingdom. And, and when God brings us all back together, there will be not enough room for them. There will be more than what is being scattered. You know what's really interesting? Just the other day, I had a Zoom meeting with a lot of the other pastors from um, the BIC it's called the cluster meeting. It's from it's with all the other community church pastors in sort of our geographical uh, location. And we were all chatting about what, how we're all doing. We're chatting. We're chatting about the new challenges we're facing, but we're also chatting about some of the successes and fruits that we're all seeing. And what was amazing to hear was that everyone, including the mission, including us here in the mission, were we're talking about how our online content is getting way more views than we ever really expected. You know, Nancy and I continue to be really amazed at our view count on our YouTube channel. And interestingly enough, a missionary, a friend of mine who's a missionary, recently pointed out that on Netflix, um, Christian faith-based content is trending on Netflix. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they noticed that a Bible series was trending on Netflix. And I got to wonder uh, if people aren't looking for real answers at this time. Let's not forget that a couple weeks ago, we were discussing, uh, you know, the, we were looking at the promise of Abraham. And uh, we were looking at the promise to Abraham that God would make his descendants, descendants as numerous as the stars. And though he had to wait patiently, he would see the fruit of that promise in his own life. And I just wanted to just uh, maybe send you or give you this passage as an encouragement that though we are scattered, we will be brought back and that there will not be room enough for us because we will bring back more than what was scattered out. And just to remain faithful and steadfast, focused and patient during uh, this time apart from each other.
Um, from here, just wanted to make a quick announcement about messages. We believe that we have everything set in place to now deliver a weekly video without any breaks in between. And starting next week, uh, I'll be composing and starting a sermon series or a message series. And I really want to look at the benefit that we all can reap or the benefit that we all can experience in isolation as it relates to our relationship between ourselves and God. There are numerous times or there's numerous places in scripture where people experience a better and more healthy relationship with God in isolation and how we can draw from their experiences, how we can learn from what they learn from and how it can benefit us and how our relationship with God can benefit during a time of isolation. So I look forward to bringing, I think, a three, four-week sermon series on that. And I look forward to just being able to um, experience God's Word together. Thank you again so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, Jamie is good, and the family are going to be leading us out with a couple songs. Let's just pray together as we close our, our time of devotion. Father God, we just do pray for this time that your kingdom would break anew into the hearts of the people. We pray, Father, that as you bring us back, that there would not be room enough for those you bring back. We pray for a harvest. We pray that, Father, the kingdom, your spirit, your good news, your son, would be um, renewed in the hearts of our people and that more would turn to you, that they would just be so dissatisfied with the answers of this world, they would look to the truth, the way, and the life, your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you. 